friends welcome back to nri samay public radio thank you very much for tuning in today today we have yet another incredible guest and if you are following the news recently the news uh, the name ashok kemka ji needs no introduction just to brief on um, background of ashok kemka uh, ashok kemka is an ias officer of uh, 1991 batch he has been uh, repeatedly transferred by various state governments in his home cadre of haryana after he exposed the corruption in the department he has posted in mr kemka recently took on the state government over suspicious land deals between congress president sonia gandhi sanilla robert wadra and real estate major dlf in haryana he has received a few death threats too after after this whole episode which is extremely unfortunate for a man who has a true representative of honesty and integrity ashok kemka ji uh, welcome to nri samay thank you for taking the time to talk our listeners around the world ashok ji uh, namaste namaste thank you thank you okay. sir you must expecting this question would you please give us a background about the deals between robert wardha and dlf why did you order the investigation sir see uh, regarding the deal between uh, robert wardha's company and dlf uh, this is a thing which is privy to these two uh, gentlemen or two persons or individual entities i won't like to comment on this on your channel but yes i ordered an investigation into the kind of transactions being registered into and whether these uh, transactions were properly valued under the indian stamp act for the purpose of government revenue on the basis of very adverse press reports which were appearing in the national media reputed media and electronic media so i thought since these departments are under my charge that it is most appropriate to order an investigation so that if everything is clear then the credibility of my department's uh, department is restored in the eyes of the public we can tell the public that look uh, there is no basis uh, in these uh, uh, reporting and if there was something adverse then it was a duty as a public servant and as a public office to set right the things and to recover the full value of the stamp duty and hence the investigation was ordered okay sir thank you you made the other number mandatory for registration of land deal in haryana this explain us how this will reduce the corruption sir uh, you see uh, making uh, aadhar number mandatory for registration of land deal it was not to reduce corruption but to stop these uh, fraudulent sales and these dynami transactions so if uh, these aadhar numbers are made compulsory for individuals and the corporate identity numbers are similarly made uh, compulsory for co- corporates uh, then what happens all these dynamic transactions or fraudulent transactions are eliminated to a large extent and uh, moreover these aadhar numbers are made compulsory for the reason that the department of land resources of the government of india itself has recommended that aadhar numbers be introduced in this uh, land transactions so i think there was a crime need in this country you know to uh, identify the buyers and purchasers of real estate where the largest proportion of black money is invested into the real estate so if uh, aadhar number or the corporate identification number is integrated with these land transactions it could be so easy to do a database search on these numbers and find out all the transactions individual wise hence aadhar number was made mandatory for registration of land deals in haryana but yes a one year time gap has been provided so that any issue with aadhar or people who are not registered with aadhar can come forward and do so so this has been made mandatory from the 1st of october 2013 sir you been transferred 43 times i guess i guess these transfer don't have much impact on your uh, sincerity and courage 
did any government official tell you that you inspired them with your honesty? I guess most of the government officers are a little uh, recalcitrant about their views, especially, you know, if uh, something is uh, not very routine to come out and appreciate that. But having said that, yes, a large number of young officers, the young recruits to the service, have been very appreciated. Uh, in 2004, you were, in, you were the director of secondary education. You ordered investigation into transfer uh, teachers. That next day you joined, they transferred you within a week. What was uh, exactly, what happened on that time, sir? Could you explain us? See, in 2004, I didn't order investigation into the transfer of teachers. I put a bad stop on the arbitrary transfer of teachers. My logic was very simple. It was the mid-academic session. It was September 2004. The session had starts in April and ends in March. The exams are due in uh, February and some end year examinations. And the mid-semester examinations or the mid-examinations were to be held in October. Now, if the teachers were being transferred arbitrarily or rampantly, then it affects the academic schedule of the students. So every day we are getting, you know, 1,000 odd notes from the CM office to ordering transfer of teachers and the whole office was bogged down by these, carrying out these transfers of teachers. The data reside in the districts, you know, sometimes you expect wrong transfers and a whole lot of administrative, the Department of Secondary Education across all states it's actually a transfer department. So I just put a stop to it. No matter whether the transfers are right or wrong or people are posted rightly or wrongly, let them continue till the end of the academic session and after that the request from anybody would be entertained. That was not liked by the political bosses and I got shifted out and initially to a post which was non-functional so I had no office and no uh, vehicle. So I had to walk about 12 kilometers each day for about 10 days uh, to the chief secretary's office. And finally, at the end of 10 days, I got a vehicle and I got my office. But again, that was a non-functional post. And uh, just bare minimum secretarial staff and an office and uh, a vehicle was provided, but I was given no work. Sir, last year, you made news when you challenged that you can prove that junior officials uh, got houses allotted by illegal means. And if you can't prove, you will bear the expenses of RTI. Could you please tell us uh, what happened with that issue? You see, uh, all these answers which I am making in your channel, let me make clear that these are very personal uh, views. They do not reflect the views of the government in the matter. Uh, having said that, uh, having given that disclaimer, now this actually in the Chandigarh administration where I reside, there are three governments, the UP administration of Chandigarh, the Punjab and Haryana. And the common pool of houses are managed by the Chandigarh administration. Now, there is a, you know, a queue jumping, queue jumping on the recommendations of the political bosses, mainly the chief ministers, the two chief ministers and the, in some cases, even the governors, the two governors of the state. And it's very easy for junior officers to jump the queue, get a recommendation, get out of some priority allotments, or uh, get a house allotted by earmarking, then after allotment get it de earmarked, and uh, then getting a priority allotment. So this matter was challenged in the courts. The scam was busted out in the Honorable High Court. Finally, the Supreme Court adjudicated upon it. And by and large, they said, look, whatever has been done till date, it's OK. But in the future, there will be no such queue jumping. And uh, the things are somewhat set right by the Honorable Supreme Court uh, by its order in August 2011. Uh, how deep is the corruption in government offices? Uh, could you give us one practical example, please? You see, the uh, corruption, I cannot describe the state of corruption in the government of India, but yes, there is corruption. And uh, I think this is uh, pervasive across uh, all nations. It's not that only India has corruption. It is there in US as well. But having said that, let's say, 
that uh, uh, one law which needs to be made is like in the corporate world, the question of insider trading. The government officials and the public servants and even the politicians, they take uh, great benefit of the special advantages which they enjoy being public servants and they make full use of that. Now, it's not a direct drive also. For example, I'll give an example of a director town and country planning who licenses colonies to these people who are applying for colonies. So it's very easy for them to shop for a, you know, some real estate at a cheaper value from those very uh, licensees whom he has licensed. And uh, similarly, in the case of land deals, you can find that you know people while giving licenses, they will partner in the development without any personal investment. Or in the case of land acquisition, people will invest along the lands where a new sector or a new colony will be developed by the government. So this kind of insider trading I have seen is very rampant in government and this is where a law needs to be framed uh, that and recognize that insider trading is a reality in government functioning and there should be a law to put a strict curb to such insider trading. Sir, we have a listener who wants to ask a question. Sir, uh, Namaste yes. sir, uh, my name is uh, Sri Hari, I am listening to your show. First of all, uh, thank you for uh, coming on air and uh, talking with us. Sir, my question is, um, uh, the other side of the coin is that uh, not only there is corruption, but people who are honest, uh, honest officers are being uh, targeted and they are being uh, kind of not given promotion or um, uh, I'll tell you one example. In Tamil Nadu, there is an there is an IAS officer called Uma Shankar. He tried to expose uh, corruption, and uh, he was uh, dismissed, and he was uh, uh, given very hard time uh, because when when in one political government he exposed corruption, the political party backed him, and when the pol the other opposition came to power, they when he exposed corruption, the other party is backing him, <laughs> but they both try to dismiss uh, him. So there are a lot of examples like that. Uh, can you please comment on that? I think I am also facing a similar kind of predicament, and this is but uh, very common. What is needed is uh, some kind of a public support and uh, strength, but I guess if uh, this is what you choose, and uh, uh, you have to live up to these hardships. So I have no easy solution for these kind of uh, issues. If I had, I would have solved my problem itself. So I'm sorry, I can't have any kind of solution, but I guess, you know, these kind of awareness amongst the public, the kind of love and adulation, and you still survive. That itself uh, should be message enough. So I can't expect to lead a cozy life or a comfortable life as a man or as one who is ready to compromise or compromise it. So that is out of the question. Sir, we have a question on NRI from my listener. He is Rahul from Chennai. He is asking you, uh, do you believe there is enough prima facie evidence against any of the two parties involved in the land deals about uh, Varda and BLF? It's not very fair for me to comment on two parties to the transaction uh, in the channel. Uh, whatever was investigated is now in the public domain. See, what was done was very simple. The land was bought and it was licensed and was it from agriculture to a commercial license and then it was sold off with the license. So it was a trading of license and trading of licenses are not permissible in law, but even otherwise, if it is permissible in law, Kasti Kaini see one thing, that just the government permission to use the land in a particular manner appreciated the value of land by eight times, and the difference was pocketed by the middlemen. So this is nothing but crony capitalism, and this is what needs to be addressed for this nation to grow. In 2006, uh, you dismissed a man named uh, Umayt, Umayt Singh from Haryana Housing Board. Now he was arrested from making threatening calls to you. Could you tell us why you had dismissed Umayt Singh from service of Haryana Housing Board? You 
see this man was a head draftsman and that he had beaten up the executive engineer somewhere in the year 1998 and uh, he was actually uh, not doing government job he was uh, doing property dealing business thing and beating up his superior officer the executive engineer in the year 2006 and the honest officer from haryana you probably know him Sanjay Chaturvedi, an IFS officer, he unethered several camps. Today, he is sort of a speaker on anti-corruption strategies for, uh, for uh, the IAS, IPS, and IFS training academy. But some of the cases registered against him. After he beginning taking action against un uh, questionable activities, in the Haryana Forest Department. Uh, continue to dock him. What can you tell us about him, sir? He is a very valued colleague uh, in the state government. Presently, he is on deputation to the All India Institute of Medical Sciences at New Delhi. He has traveled in life. I guess some action taken by the state government against him, in my personal view, was not proper. And uh, he had taken very righteous and action under the rule of law. Uh, I wish him well. But uh, uh, the details of the case, I guess, uh, again, it would be a very personal opinion on the matter. But I guess the actions taken by the government against Mr. Sanjeev Chaturvedi may not be fully justifiable in any court of law. Sir, we have, a, uh, we have a, another caller. You want to ask a question? Hi, hi. Uh, this is uh, Ashokji. This my name is Sindhu. I'm talking from Los Angeles. I have a question. Uh, first of all, uh, it's really great uh, honor to speak to you, and thanks for whatever you are doing for the country. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you, like you are dealing with very big people and uh, a lot of things, right? So did you ever feel the pressure of uh, giving up all these and uh, stay aloof? The pressure is always there. It's uh, not correct if I say that the pressure is not there. The pressure is always there, but I guess you see life is guided by two emotions primarily. It is the fear and the greed. The fear is more primordial, but I guess you have to overcome fear with your willpower. I have a very strong willpower, so I guess to psychologically break me down will be a little bit more difficult than any other person. Uh, one of the NRI Samay listeners, Kumar Shastri from Sikhindrapath is asking this question. Because you have received threats, uh, has the government provided adequate security to you? If yes, are you satisfied with the same? And Kumar is also asking, uh, is there any sort of indicative attitude from your superiors? Threats of all kinds, they were overt and covert. Uh, but I have chosen to ignore them. One particular threat was addressed to my office staff and that lady staff had collapsed. So in that instant case, I had got the FIA register. But otherwise, I get over all these uh, word and covert threats. I have not taken any security. So if there is a violation or infringement of the law, there must be a swift investigation and prosecution and deterrent action taken. And that is going to prevent future actions. Uh, just having security, I guess security is more of a paraphernalia between to, you know, to create a charge between the ruler and the rule. And I don't believe in that. I'm a very humble sir, uh, public servant, and I don't believe in special security for my safety. I guess public opinion is the best shield against this Congress uh, of the society. And regarding the vindictive attitude uh, of anybody. You see, it happens. I would not like to say that all superiors have been vindicted. Some of them were, and some of them were very good also. So both kinds were there. So uh, one has to feel and take everything in in one's own stride. Ashok uh, sir, in Andhra Pradesh, uh, currently CBI mm. is investigating a similar case. Recently, YSR government has elected thousands of hackers of land to private companies. In exchange, these companies have invested hundreds of crores in his son's companies. The IAS officer who approved these deals are saying that 
the government is responsible for the deal and we are not responsible should ias officer take responsibility for their actions sir definitely yes see, i don't know the particulars of the deal but uh, whatever you have narrated the government the ias officers is are also a part of the government and it is not true not correct that the chief minister is the government chief minister is the part of the state government so also ias officers are part of the state government the chief minister happened to sit at the top now when ias officers are quiz to an illegal dictator of his political master he is doing out of his own self interest and once he has spent the fine he is equally responsible and culpable and i would unequivocally say that his land was transferred to the private company without adequate consideration and uh, if those transactions are wrong it is not only the government or the chief minister who is culpable it is the ias officers also who have signed on the dotted line are also equally culpable unless he has dissented in writing on file so in give the current uh, opportunities in private sector and the <laughs> challenges ias officers are facing how attractive do you think ias is uh, for the current generation you see there is no comparison between the private sector and the government they are like chalk and cheese i mean i am not telling that one is the chalk the other is the cheese but there is absolutely no no comparison i like apples and oranges and government is very challenging let's accept that government is a part of our life we cannot do away without government the government is will and uh, has been a very attractive sector and i wish the best of talent best of youth are motivated enough to join the government there are a lot of opportunities within the government and uh, not to run only after the private sector and not to run only after money and the government has a lot to offer and a lot of opportunities which the private sector may not be able to give so the the domain in both are completely different so it depends upon one factor aptitude but i only wish and appeal to your channel that the best of minds and the best of people do also come to the government so we have one other listener he wants to ask question yeah thank you sir for coming for the show uh, i am anuradha calling from san jose here in california uh, i have just one question for you like this anna hazare lokpal bill or jan lokpal bill which the government is planning to put in uh, do you think this will solve any this corruption problem or uh, what is your opinion about this jan lokpal bill i will answer you absolutely not this law could have solved the problem when uh, 376 and 302 icc were there in our statute books since uh, more than 150 years there would have been no crimes See, what would solve the problem is the will and determined and swift action see these institutions to stop corruption already exist in our society but they are dysfunctional just creating a lokpal who will be the lokpal tell me who will be the jan lokpal so he would be one amongst us and he can who tell that he cannot be corrupt or he will not be corrupt or he will not be lazy or dysfunctional there are already lok ayuktas in my state at least and i have not seen him investigating even one deal properly so you know uh, uh, just uh, uh, having lokpal or jan lokpal or lok ayukta is not going to solve the problem what is required is that if there is a case of corruption it must be pursued to its logical end there must be deterrent and swift action if institutions created on paper can solve our problems then i guess you can create that india is heaven and a manna from heaven you can create a law and say that everything will be okay god has willed you know the 10 commandments so you can make a law like the 10 commandments and everything will turn into heaven it's not so so can you see neither the lokpal or jan lokpal bill are going to solve our problems our problems can only be solved if we are absolutely said was that if there is an act of corruption there has to be a logical end to it and there are institutions even okay. now to handle it but those are corrupted and creating a new institution doesn't guarantee you that it is not going to get corrupted in the future finally sir what is your message to our listeners around the world 
they are waiting for your message please no i am a very you know i am i am a very humble public servant i am only doing my duty i have no message to give to others so whatever i say is that do your duty without fear of fear that's all okay thank you thank you very much sir and uh, you know you are spending your valuable time with us for our listeners um, thank you very much sir. to all the listeners of nri samay Uh, thank you friends uh, for tuning in today nri samai and this is shrikan uh, signing off uh, over to sri hari garu uh, thank you tinku friends uh, you, li- you just listen to ashok kemka ji um, such an incredible person and uh, we are honored to have him on the show we will be back tomorrow uh, with uh, another uh, uh, great personality uh, she uh, she has uh, have uh, been working on the poor and uh, actually she is an economist and also an activist and uh, she is a professor in IIT Delhi her name is uh, Reetika Khera and uh, we will be talking about various issues uh, which are mainly concerning uh, rural sector like uh, food security or uh, public distribution system and uh, uh, the employment guarantee scheme by the government and and a lot of other issues so i hope uh, you guys will join us back tomorrow and until then uh, uh, listen to the song and i uh, hope you will be back tomorrow thanks